DNA barcoding really started in 2003, and it started with uh, Canadian scientist Paul Hebert at the University of Guelph, uh, wrote a paper saying that we could use short DNA sequences from a certain region, standardized region of the genome, to identify species. And he said, and we could call these DNA barcodes, and this was really by analogy with, you know, you go through the supermarket and you go to checkout, uh, the cashier doesn't have to read the label is, they just scan it. And that's much faster than uh, reading labels. So the idea was, could we develop a system for species that would have some of those same features where we could use a machine to read the DNA in a sense, match that uh, to a name. And that would help us identify things, which is really difficult to do. There are uh, about two million named species of plants and animals, and that's far more than any one person can keep track of. And then, in addition, a lot of things have different life stages. They're eggs, they're larvae, uh, or you might want to know what's in the stomach. What does something eat? When this started in 2003, uh, it was an idea that Paul Bear proposed, and that led to a workshop, two workshops, actually at Cold Spring Harbor, one in March and then another one in the following September, to just get other scientists together to say, okay, that's a nice idea, but really is it going to work? Uh, because at that time there, there weren't barcodes for many species, and is it going to work? And, uh, and how, if it's going to work, how are we going to make it work? And from the beginning it was clear it was a way of taking science knowledge of experts and making it available to a much wider number of people. So 2003 it was an idea. And as of today, there are now over a million barcode records. That's um, from a million different specimens, each one is which has been identified individually by a specialist. So uh, the next phase is to go from uh, a million records to five million records, go from 100,000 species to 500,000 species. And, and we've got a, a wonderful group of international collaborators that are dedicated to working on their group or their country to make a, a barcoding effective really around the world.